process goes back to 2007 when both uh, Dr. Oakes and I were invited to be members of the panel that reviewed this drug, rosiglitazone, um, uh, as to whether it was safe and effective to be maintained on the market. And we came to the conclusion that although there were some potential issues, that it uh, should remain on the market. And this is what the FDA um, did in, in the decision that they made. And so both uh, uh, Dr. Oakes and I participated in that. And this was a follow-up meeting um, in uh, three years later that uh, was a two-day meeting. Uh, I was struck by the uh, the openness of the process that we heard from many different points of view from inside the FDA. Uh, there was no attempt to cover over or hide the differences that uh, scientists within the FDA uh, had in uh, interpreting and understanding the data. The real question they asked us at the panel was on the basis of the information that's accumulated since 2007 when they last had the panel meeting, was there sufficient information to either um, take the drug off the market because of significant side effects or should the drug be maintained or what have you? And the problem was that the number of different studies that were reported, uh, some were aggregate studies, putting various studies together. Other one was this uh, uh, trial that had a lot of defects and the net result was that people couldn't uh, come to a clear conclusion. So it was really felt that there was inadequate information to make a definitive decision. The net result is that it fell into a gray area and therefore uh, people expressed their own personal opinion which is influenced by their experience and some people wanted the drug taken off the market, some wanted it continued left to the discretion of the physician and the physician's interaction with patients. And it's unfortunate that there isn't the definitive information that one would like to have to make those types of decisions. There were very significant issues of data quality. Some of the studies presented were of higher quality than others. Uh, the gold standard is the randomized double-blind clinical trial. Uh, unfortunately, we did not have data from a, a randomized, double-blind cl clinical trial that would uh, definitively answer the questions that were posed. So we were left with looking at the value of uh, the information we did have. There was nothing that was presented in any way, shape, or form about the current rosy glitazone. That uh, the question came up whether there was some increase in. Uh, heart attacks. Well, the evidence was not overwhelming or convincing. So um, for the patient, the patient will probably uh, make the decision in conjunction with his or her physician and the final recommendation that will come out of the uh, Food and Drug Administration. Right at the present time, it leaves the patient a little bit uneasy um, because they don't want to be taking something that has some potential um, serious side effects. In terms of the true life-threatening side effects, I think the uh, uh, risk is terribly small, no, no larger than would occur if you're just driving a car and somebody else says, uh, is working on their um, iPhone or something. But uh, there are risks, but uh, they're uh, quite small and not necessarily out of proportion to other drugs that are on the market. Uh, one important point, though, is that there is another uh, drug within the same class, the TZDs, uh, that, uh, as far as we know, with one caveat that I'm sure Dr. Moss will uh, expand on, with one caveat, uh, does appear to be safe, has not been associated with these suggestions of increased risk of heart attack that was mentioned. So uh, we're not in a situation where this as far as we know, we're not in a situation where this drug has unique benefits that would be lost if it were taken off the market. So the question then would be, well, why don't we just rely on this other drug? It's called pioglitazone. 
Well, the problem is that it's had a very limited follow-up to date. So it's on average, there is probably no more than a year of follow-up on in terms of studies that have been done, whereas the rosiglitazone is upwards now of four years. So you're comparing a drug that hasn't had its sort of uh, full exposure in the management and treatment of patients who have a chronic disease. So um, there is some issue as to whether these are comparable. And when they tried to compare the two drugs, there was no head-to-head -head comparison. So that one couldn't say with clarity that one, the pioglitazone was clearly better and safer in the long run than the rosy glitazone. So it's nice to have a spectrum of, of uh, somewhat different medications available because patients are different. Patients are young and old, male and female. Some uh, patients are going to have an allergic react to, uh, reaction to some medication, maybe existing medications that they're on. Um, it's nice to have uh, a spectrum of medications. One doesn't use, necessarily use all the medications to the same degree. So I think this gives the doctor a little bit more choice and um, the physician prescribing this will make his own judgment uh, to some degree on the information. I think that the result of this meeting will, um, there may be legislation that the Food and Drug Administration has to require more scientifically sound studies, um, not only in the approval process, but in the post-marketing after a drug or a device is, is released. So I think that all this will contribute to better long-term safety for uh, items, therapeutic items that are um, provided to uh, the profession to, for patients. Diabetes is an enormous problem for individuals in public health generally. It is important that research continue that we do, although we have many therapies already, there, are, there is no ideal therapy and it is important that research in this area continue. I would subscribe to that completely.